Hey everyone, let's go ahead and make our fiberglass mold. So what we're gonna do is start with a good plug. So here we're using a standard Bondo to just go ahead and fix any pinholes and in this case, modify the bumper a little bit. As you can see, I've removed the Nissan symbol from the bumper and that's just because I didn't want it. So I'm covering it up so that my mold will not have that in it. I went ahead and sanded it down smooth. I got it up to a 400 grit. I didn't want any higher than that because I need the Duratec surfacing primer to stick to it. Now here I'm gonna show you a trick on how to use a Harbor Freight spray gun to spray this Duratec surfacing primer, which is a quite thick liquid. What you're gonna go ahead and do in, well, in my case, I had to modify this wrench. I had to grind it down so that it would fit. But then you simply just remove this cap on the spray gun and take a 1 16th drill bit and drill it out. That'll actually make it closer to a 1.5 millimeter spray tip. Um, 1.3 is definitely the smallest you can have it and still be able to spray this Duratec surfacing primer. Duratec surfacing primer with a high gloss additive will allow you to get a mirror finish if sanded properly on your plug so that you'll have that same mirror finish when you get to the actual mold. As you can see, the needle of the spray gun still pokes through and it will seal so you don't need to worry about extra material spraying out while you're just walking around. Go ahead and clean up your plug especially this one because it had so much sanding. Remember when using this Duratec surfacing primer, you want to pre-mix it before pouring it into your uh, mixing pan. Once you do that, you can add, I believe it's 20% of the high gloss additive to your Duratec. You're gonna activate this the same way you will your resin just with MEKP. Please don't judge my painting skills. This is the first time I've ever actually used a paint gun, but I went ahead and laid on one thin coat, let it tack up and then added additional coats to make sure that I had full coverage. The best part about Harbor Freight gun is yeah. cleanup. You simply just throw it away. It's a $9 gun. What's going on, buddy? Get off there. Come on, get. Oh, sorry. Uh, well, what a learning experience that was. I tried my best to fill all the issues, but we still have a couple imperfections here, a couple pinholes over here. Um, I think maybe some of this stuff is due to contamination. Maybe I should have cleaned a little bit better, but I'm gonna go ahead and sand this stuff down and then we will reprime it. I don't know if that's a proper method, but we're gonna try. I guess we're gonna try some 180 and just kind of level this out, see what we can get to. I guess I'll have to uh, feather it out a little bit since I'm gonna have to respray it. So let's go ahead and Okay, we've gone ahead and taken this up to a 2500 grit, so we get a pretty good mirror polish. And now we're going to actually polish this before we prepare it to start our mold. So we will let the heavy cutting compound do its job, get all the imperfections out, the swirls, and then we're gonna move to a little bit finer of a grit in order to just really polish that up to a mere shine. As you can see, I've already laid down some painter's tape along the edges that I will use hot melt glue to secure the corrugated sign board. It's a plastic board that easily releases from gel coat and fiberglass. Um, we will use those as our flanges. So I don't want to glue it necessarily to the piece. It's not that difficult to get off, but it just makes everything a bit more clean. I've laid this painter's tape a little bit higher. And what this is going to allow me do, to do is take a razor along this edge so that I can get a good template for what the sign board is going to need to be shaped like. And so we'll go ahead and do that. <clears throat> now, if you use this method, you do kind of want to remember that the part you cut off is the bottom of the flange. So here I'm using a measuring tape to add four and a half inches above that line. And then I'm just cutting it out so that I have a proper flange. If you do the opposite, it's not going to fit. Then what I like to do is go ahead and secure the flange to the piece using more painter's tape, just to make sure you have alignment correct, as you can tell based on my measurements. There is a little bit of an overlap. I did two relief cuts, one there and one there, in order to make sure that it deals with the uh, 
the shape of the bumper well. So what I'll go ahead and do is start hot melt gluing this main piece and we will keep the painter's tape on the bottom there because what it does is act acts as a, a little bit of a uh, hinge so that we can put in our hot melt glue in and start securing it. This is a very massive piece, so we have to do it in sections. Okay, now that the bottom flange is done, we're gonna go ahead and throw in some sign board here to fill in these gaps because gel coat and fiberglass can't stick to nothing. And we'll do one more flange up top, and then I'll show you how we were going to manage this negative draft angle caused by the support beam with this multi-part mold. Doing this back flange was actually quite a pain just because you have the smallest surface area to really hot melt glue this thing to. So I went ahead and measured it all out and did individual pieces for all of the gaps. I'm also going to have to do a separation along this flange because of the shape of the bumper. It would cause a mechanical lock if I were just try to, you know, make a whole mold of this bumper straight away in the front there. So I'm going to go on and explain the reason why you have to do a multi-part mold for something like this. All right, I'm going to use this really cheap mirror to model the reason why you would need a multi-part mold. If this were your flange and you were to make a mold of this, it would be no problem. You have only these positive draft angles here. It's not a big deal. You would be able to pull the mold off of this. However, if you were attempting to make the mold and this again was your flange like this it would not work because you have this negative draft angle where it comes underneath here and so if you lay the gel coat and the fiberglass this would be permanently locked within there because of this angle here it would be trapped there's no way for it to slip out it, the mold does not give the part does not give there's nothing that you can do and unfortunately like i was saying with this bumper as you can see with this support beam it starts over here with a positive draft angle where it comes up to meet the side piece. And as you come through, you notice that it narrows. And so that's a negative draft angle when compared to the rest of the bumper. So we also have these pieces at the very top here, which isn't a big deal. And then of course the negative draft angle that you can see here on the bottom of the lip. What I've done is cut out some beveled edges with a flat piece that the cardstock can stick against so that I'll be able to glue to the top of the bumper as well as this support brace. It's very, very hard to get a straight edge when cutting this stuff with a cardboard simply because of these little separations between the cardstock. Um, trying to follow it with a razor blade, you're going to inevitably get into one of these areas and it's just going to jag it up. So I recommend using a Dremel with a cutoff wheel and that'll chop it pretty good. So we've gone ahead and cut out some templates. We're going to apply this to the bumper so that it has a support piece. And then we will apply additional support pieces either against this at like some sort of uh, T or we're gonna lay it down and uh, support it this way. Something to keep in mind when you're doing the flange with a corrugated cardboard, you want to make sure that if you're doing a rounded piece that you're not doing it against these separations. You wanna follow it so that it bends. Now, if you need a very aggressive bend, what you can do is actually cut in between these little walls and that'll allow it to flex very, very easily. Downside to that is there's no support. So you really, really need to be careful and choose that wisely because if it's too flimsy, you're not gonna be able to put your clay in there. You're also not going to put any gel coat. So let's go ahead and experiment. This is probably the most tedious part of making a mold. Just doing all the flange work is extremely, extremely time consuming. And doing something like this where you need supports just takes a ridiculous amount of time to cut it all out. But it feels good to get a really good flange built. So here I had to bevel the edges of this cardstock so that it would properly fit on the bumper and give me the exact angle that I wanted. Again, just more hot melt glue and securing it to itself and on the back, actually using additional cardstock to glue the pieces to each other so that there's some level of support. Once you get enough hot melt glue in there, just throwing it on like it's a MIG welder or something on the, along the backside there. 
it will be very secure and you will have no worries about applying your uh, clay or your gel coat and then of course applying additional layers of fiberglass on top of that. But take your time, make sure it fits, use plenty of painter's tape, just make sure it all fits really well. Here's a little trick to get difficult shapes. You can just outline the shape of the bumper and take, you know, the tape, transfer it to some cardstock and then cut it out. I'm actually doing this as a support brace because there's just no way for the cardstock to stick to just that little edge of the bumper and have support. So what I'm doing is laying that up there and then tossing in some hot melt glue. So there's just a larger surface area for this stuff to stick to. Then of course I'll glue the back of these pieces and support it. Now for more difficult edges, I grabbed one of these tools because trying to cut out a piece of cardstock to fit this would be crazy without first having some way to get an accurate measurement. So I just marked it up with a marker, added some painter's tape because I'm going to hot melt glue along the bumper and I don't want to damage the surface that we've created. Made sure it fit and then got to gluing. As you can see, there's more support braces on this. Again, this is just because it's such a small surface area to stick to that it will surely just let go the second you start applying any pressure, like when you start doing your clay work. It's not the prettiest thing in the world. You know, it would be much prettier to have a full single piece of cardstock for the flange, but the end result is still gonna come out quite nice. Now here I'm building the box for the center grill piece. Like I talked before, there's a negative draft angle. So what I'm going to have to do is make this a multi-part mold in the center. In retrospect, I should have just uh, cut it out or modified it so that there wasn't the negative draft angle. But you know, you live and learn. So I'm boxing out the center grill and creating just some uh, extra cardstock so that there's not like these ridiculous sharp edges when installing this. Just like the back, just like the sides, everywhere else, we're going to need some support braces. So just cutting up little pieces of cardstock and then gluing it to that gapped area and the bumper. Now you can use rubbing alcohol to get any excess uh, glue that's left over. That stuff takes that glue off pretty, pretty quick. So you just soak it and you can just scrub it. Now we need to cover all the seams for the cardstock because gel coat would obviously get in there and ruin the mold. So we're just using regular old shipping tape. It uh, adheres really, really well and will prevent the gel coat from going inside of it. So after we get all the seams taped up, we're gonna start applying our clay. Now, because this is a multi-part mold, we need a super tight flange. You don't want some weird angle for the second part of the flange when you start doing the second part of the bumper. So what I do to get a good clay separation is a popsicle stick, and then I sand it down to the very, very tight radius that I want. As you can see, it's you can hardly tell that that edge is beveled, but it is. And then we just run it through the clay to make sure that we get the super tight beveled edge right along the edge of the cardstock. And this will ensure a super tight gap for the second part so that we're not having resin and all that leaking through the mold when we are actually creating the part. So we're gonna use some rubbing alcohol here, wipe down any oils, and it also removes the clay very well. We will use a mold wax to make sure that we have a good release. You're going to apply five layers of this. So you apply it quite thin, you just let it haze up, and then you buff it off. After doing five layers, we're gonna go ahead and spray some PVA Again, with our trusty Harbor Freight gun, you wanna make sure this thing has a tight, tight radius so that you're atomizing this stuff very well. You don't want it so thick that you're seeing drops of the PVA. Just do multiple layers. Don't allow it to coalesce, you know, bubble up. So once our PVA is set up, we're gonna go ahead and do our tooling gel coat, which is what you wanna use, not a standard gel coat because it's not hard enough to pull parts from in the mold. So I mixed this stuff up and I wanted to experiment with brushing it on which is exactly what I did. I did several thin layers of gel coat, but because of the vertical areas on the bumper, I just didn't love the surface finish with it. So I still used my dump gun to fill in any gaps and make sure I had a thick, thick coat of gel coat on there. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Stay tuned. I will have part two of how to finish making this mold coming out as soon as I get to it. And by get to it, I mean actually do the mold.